Hey, hey, what's up, you guys? You're going to Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. Now, we are going to get into this episode of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. First, I want to apologize that I missed episode three. Had a lot going on that week, so I just couldn't get to it. But honestly, we're going to just go ahead and skip to number four. I was thinking about combining them, but it's just, we're just going to get into number four. Um, Portia and Giselle. I see the little duo that they're trying to create between the two. Yes, it's entertaining, but yes, it's also a little bit exhausting as well because you can see how they're trying to force moments. Like, you can see how they're trying to just jump in and create, you know, chaos. Like, essentially, that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, you guys, we're going to do that. And then y'all, whoo-hoo. Tasha, Tasha, one question. Where is Tamika money? Y'all, we got to talk about Tamika, Tasha, and Rocky with his old big headed head. Um, yeah, we got to talk about that, that. And I really want to get y'all's opinion. So I really might go live. So y'all just stay tuned. Um, and we will see. If not, I'll do a video to talk about it. But woo, I tell you, I tell you, Tasha, girl, that man got your head. He got your head all the way up just wrapped around in it just twisted girl you at her looking fugazi over that sorry ass really really and first of all can we just pause for a minute and just look at the <laughs> y'all took my hair out obviously i know i had the faux locks in um and so right now your girl is really just i'm really just kind of rocking the natural right now the just the natural waves and stuff like it's cute or whatever like i'm not mad at it. it's giving you know real you know, 1960s, you know, wanna be Diana Ross. <laughs> you know, it's cute. And like, I'm just gonna rock it. Like, it's just gonna be whatever it is. Uh, y'all can drop down in the comments. Do y'all like my little natural hair look? I'm just gonna be at the house, sweatpants, hair tie, chill with no makeup on, okay? Um, yeah, like it's kind of cute, you know, it's kind of cute or whatever. Um, but yeah, your girl's gonna get a perm after this though. Uh, the roots, you know, when you find when you finally get your hair taken down after having it up, the roots or the roots as I like to call them, it's the roots, y'all. The roots, <laughs> the roots is getting thick, okay. Um, but yeah, you guys, Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip, y'all just rock with me in my little natural waviness, okay? If y'all gonna be on my channel, y'all gonna have to accept me as I is in all aspects, okay? In all ways. Um, but yeah, you guys, we're going to open the girls' trip. Let's go ahead and get into it, all right? So we open up with Portia and Giselle walking inside, the, walking inside the house or whatever. And they were talking about Giselle, like, dipping in the pool with the white girls. And she was like, yeah, but you know, uh, something like, buddy, like, you, you black, white or whatever. And it was like, I know you try to say it as a joke, but unfortunately for Giselle, like, she is, like, well, I used to, you know, like growing up when you are, you know, of the lighter persuasion and you talk proper and, you know, you are in like a predominantly black, you know, neighborhood, you get called the, the Oreo, the penguin, like all of it. I've been called it, you know, girl, you really ain't black, like all that stuff. I've been called that. But see, the difference between me and Giselle is I wasn't treating other people like shit, <laughs> Based upon me being just some, you know, quote unquote, light skinned girl, I wasn't doing the mean girl, you know, sorority hierarchy bulls that Giselle was doing on Real Housewives of Potomac. Like, you can tell Giselle was one of those, you know, light skinned pretty girls that played into, you know, her light skinned green eyed privilege. And she knew she back then she would have been considered, you know, white. And, you know, Giselle is very much aware of everything. And she likes to play to other people like it doesn't exist though. Like that's what's annoying. But and then and later on in the episode, you can very well explain the history of you though and the black folks. Okay, we're gonna talk about that. But I just thought that was just real kind of like, hmm. And she was like, oh yeah, girl, you know, like you white black or like black white or something like that. So Candace and Leah, they conversing, you know, basically Leah is appreciative of Candace, like basically being there for her because Portia and Giselle really was coming at her throat, okay, on the yacht. And so, you know, Candace wasn't appreciating that. It was kind of giving off a little like, uh, like dog pile on Leah. And what Leah was explaining was like, I don't feel good. I got anxiety, like being around all you heifers, you know, in Thailand, a foreign country and everybody 
is having their anxiety in one way or another, but they all are going to obviously handle it in different ways. And that's what Candace said was like, Portia, how are you to tell me how I'm handling things? You know, because Portia's like, I got it too. And it's like, well, bitch, I gotta, I'm going to handle it different than you. Like, point blank, period. So Heather is downstairs, you know, getting breakfast, talking to Marisol. I think it was like Marisol, Alexa, uh, Alexia, and um, somebody else. And they're basically talking to Heather about, you know, oh, Lee, that's what it was. Uh, about the whole Whitney situation. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm burnt out on Whitney and, and Heather already. Both you hoes is, you know, definitely just... It, it's giving hypocrisy a little bit on both ends, but more or not, it's more hypocrisy on Whitney's end, if you ask me. Like, I was a fan of Whitney on Salt Lake City. I'm kind of not becoming a fan of Whitney, like, right now. But I think, as Heather called it, you know, in the previous episode... Whitney right now is the breadwinner of her household. Her nigga done lost his job. And so, which I got to do what's necessary. So if I see, I got to hop on, you know, Giselle and Portia shit because, you know, they are, you know, kind of the, you know, the upper echelon, you know, the OGs technically of, you know, this kind of group. Like, you can tell that's what Whitney's doing. And Heather called it out, like, in confession, like, girl, which one is it? Either you're going to be the villain or the good guy, but like, bitch, pick one. Like, we're not going to Karen Huger this and try to ride the fence, you know, all the way through. We can't do that, okay? Um, and then, especially try to call out Heather for her BS in the same time. Like, we can't do it, ma'am. But Leah basically tells Heather, like, girl, she basically tried to, like, warn me of you. Like, that's what she was doing. Like, basically trying to, like, call Heather out and, like, warn other people about her. But yeah, Whitney, you're in your room talking to Lisa and talking shit about Heather, like, make it make sense. Like, do you guys feel like it's more Whitney or Heather that's causing the drama between the two of them? Um, she basically tells Lisa, like, you know, she understands that she was brought on to Salt Lake City via Heather. And, you know, so she felt some type of loyalty to her. And, you know, she realized she was going after Lisa on account of Heather. And it was like, wait a minute. Lisa was on your ass, Whitney. Do you not remember how Lisa, independently of whatever Heather was telling you, was talking about how you was on the stripper pole and, like, judging you and you felt judged by her and she always made those slick-ass comments like, you don't remember that? And that had nothing to do with Heather. Like, I don't like how Whitney is trying to put just everything on Heather. Like, no. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Um... And so now Lisa Chop know, oh, Heather's just mad that she got caught. And, you know, there's she, Whitney's stuck on this. You know, you want to talk about being a bad Mormon and leaving the church, but you ain't even left the church yet. And it's like, who the cares? Like, at the end of the day, as long as she's in the process of doing it, however long it takes, like, it just, we'll talk about that when we get to the part with the book. So basically for the day, um, it was going to be an excursion. The weather was bad. So Giselle and, you know, Portia come downstairs and basically talk about what they're doing. Um, and so the first thing that they end up doing is getting some massages, the Thai massages, which definitely looks so good. I could use a good scratch right now, just a good, you know, push, pushing the body parts, you know, on the side, on the bike, I could feel it. Ooh. So Portia's like, I want to get naked. Like, <laughs> Because when the time massages, you get naked, naked, okay, looking naked. Um, and, you know, you let them do what it do. They damn near getting all the crevices and cracks, okay? And so all the ladies just, oh, uh, ooh. Uh, and so Kate is like, is this, is, is this a brothel? Like, wait a minute, like, is this a bathhouse? Like, wait a minute, what's happening here? Like, I'm... It's the sound effects is starting to get real triple X up in here, okay? Triple X in Thailand. Um, and so, um, yeah, just watched all the ladies. It was getting the massages and whatnot. Um, so after that, uh, Mary ended up playing uh, like this volleyball game or whatever. And they have teams and it's basically everybody in their, you know, franchise. And then we get to Portia and Leah. And Portia kind of low-key took a dig and she was like, the name is going to be poor Leah. And so Leah's like, right. Lorsha, you know, it couldn't have been nothing else. Just poor Leah. Everybody was like, okay. So they ended up playing the game and, um, you know, Portia and their, their side wins. So then after that game, they um, play the tiny hands game. They're eating the noodles and whatnot. Um, and then we get to the messy mess and they start, uh, I guess they were sitting down to eat. 
Uh, and first of all, I would have loved the little Thai grill thing cooking all my food up. Yes, would have did it. Um, oysters, Candace is not here for it. She said it looked like busted ass labias. I mean, they do have a little bit of a, a vaginal, you know, type of uh, appearance. You know, that's why people like the pearl, you know, the pearl. You know, that's why the, the clam, you know, all of that, it is, you know, very vaginistic. <laughs> uh -huh. So, nonetheless, they're sitting down and all of a sudden we just start seeing Leah with the damn, you know, with the... You know, Portia, I just, I just, you know, I just, I, I, I want to talk to you, you know. Portia got that confession to my, this one thing Candace is going to do, Candace is going to cry. But damn near, guess what? That, that drop will never get past her cheek. It's going to make it right here. It barely make it past her nose crevice. Okay, so basically Portia lets, I mean, Candace lets Portia know, you know, she felt some type of way about her statement you know she was like after season five and everything happened you know i just you know it wasn't even the actual event itself it was just what happened after you know and i just you know i heard you on the show on bravo chat and you know i you just were spewing you know things that weren't true and and portia was like well you know i just basically said um you know what was being talked about essentially portia was on bravo chat room and was like girl candace you suing because you're trying to get that new down down payment on the new house that you're trying to buy with chris because we all know candace's previous house was all under her mama's name and she needed to get from under her mama's thumb point blank period but candace is like you know it's real amazing how y'all gave her you're bringing what she has to say forward but you didn't give me the opportunity to speak. And so Giselle kind of, this is this, like every time, if you've noticed, every time somebody's going for Portia, Giselle chimes in. Every time somebody's going for Giselle, Portia chimes in. They've clearly decided like, bitch, we in this together. So Portia was like talking about it. And um, Giselle was like, well, no, like Candace, you ought to be glad because I defended you, you know, against, you know, that was the one time that me and Portia disagreed with each other. Like, girl, I rolled for you. First of all, Giselle, the only fucking reason that you rolled for Portia, for Candace is because you did a fuck with Monique. Like, let's cut the shit. You didn't like Monique. It was, I, the what that was one of the main things I hated about that situation happening is because it was just like, it had Giselle and Robin just, just salivating and Giselle went through the most just dramatics of bringing the security guard talking about oh you know you're just a bad example for your children her and Robin for black women that's not the approach that we that's not the perception we want to give off but yet when Mia throws a drink on Wendy y'all remember how that went when Mia throws a drink on Wendy <laughs> That's not the response, was it, huh? Which is why we had to have the whole colorism conversation because now all of a sudden it's, I can understand. Well, what did Mia do wrong? Okay. Um. So yeah, Candace is like, well, no, like what y'all said wasn't true. And so Portia's like, well, you better be glad, like you should be glad that, you know, at least what Giselle said was facts. You know, what I was saying was hearsay. So Portia, you're aware that what you were saying wasn't based on anything like you know if you let somebody speak long enough they'll tell on themselves <laughs> and so now candace is just kind of like this is bs because at the end of the day like you're chiming in you're defending her she said that raggedy ass hoe you know y'all can let her off like monique was out when you know she left you know she was out and doing her little press runs and everybody you know had room for her to say her stuff and you know, they brought forward what she was saying, but Candace is like, you know, yeah, Giselle, I can appreciate that you were defending me, but that still don't change the fact that I would have liked to be able to speak up for myself. And so Giselle basically is taking that like as if Candace is giving her the middle finger for like defending her. And it's not what she's saying, but y'all know Giselle, like she needs to have somebody to, to fight with right now. Um... So Giselle's over it. You know, they talk about journalism and, and 
Portia, how dare you try to call yourself a journalist? Because Candace is like, hello, here, degree, journalism of communications, you know, degree, St. John, so the whoa, whoa, whoa. And Portia's like, hello, I got the journalist job. And it's like, like Marisol said, but y'all, y'all is a fluff opinionated show like girl y'all basically do what we do but on tv like come on Portia <laughs> bitch let it go so they get done with that Candace is over the conversation they got to get up and they are um um going to play uh is that when they left and play Tudor Spewed I think it was yeah, they all end up getting up and then um, coming back to play uh, spew it or chew it. And so basically, um, they had to either tell it or, you know, chew up the scorpion. So Portia, she asked uh, Alexia, Ray, her lovers. She asked Marisol who she trusts the least. And that was Leah. And Leah was like, bitch, right back at you. Like, I don't trust your ass, Nitha. Um... She asked, um, who, who I was at the table? She asked, um, oh, Leah to name who does she think shouldn't be coming back on Real Housewives of New York and Leah bit the, before she even bit the Scorpio, Portia was like, well, well, wait, wait, wait. Everybody was like, wait, wait. Like they was wanting her to tell it. She's like, why don't y'all want me to eat the Scorpion? It is like, they wanted some mess. That's why Leah, that's the whole point of the show, mess. Uh, so she ends up eating the scorpion. She asked Whitney what three lies has Heather told. And now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden Whitney's with the, oh, well, you know, I, I really want to talk to Heather, just us, you know, just us, because I don't want to be messy anymore. Heather's like, well, I want to hear it though. So she bite the scorpion. They ask Heather, bitch, who punched you in the eye? She still wants to go with the story of, I don't know who did it. I got drunk and fell. Or, you know, maybe a titty hit me in the face in a threesome. But everybody thinks Jen did it. I personally think Jen did it. Because at the end of the day, like, who else does she have to protect? Like, those were the only people up at the time. Um, and if it possibly was Jen, that could either add time to her sentence or not be good for her when it comes to, in regards to, like, the show. And unfortunately, I think... Heather can't help but get into these like abusive like relationships and relationships with people who clearly are no good for her and I know a lot of that has to do with you know being raised in like this Mormon church you know um you know in that type of religion they expect you just to be followers in a sense you know and especially with somebody like Heather who's not confident in herself and is still kind of like lost in that like it's easy to get relationships that like she said you know i'm just i'm just a sucker that she said last episode like i'm just a sucker for you you know uh like for people and just trying to be the best you know and just be loyal to them i know that sometimes i can be dumb and it's like then you should work on that bitch like you really should um i think she asked what did she ask candace did she, what did she ask candace um Oh, would you uh, marry, kill, or drag Monique or beat Monique? She was like, I would beat her to death. Uh, did she give Giselle a question? Did she give Giselle a question? Because I can't remember. I don't think she did. Did she ask Giselle a question? I'm trying to think of it. I can't remember. Um, nonetheless, the game was cute. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Yeah, Whitney, she didn't want to say nothing about Heather. The lies you tell, like, just messy. So, it's time for the night out, right? Uh, it's Giselle's night. You know, she's going with the New Orleans theme. They do the second line. So, they on the way. And so, Portia, oh, you could tell it's just, that when they on the way to the dinner, oh, you could just tell it's one person and she's just gunning out for two people. First of all, is she gunning for you two? Absolutely not. But we already know like, she don't fuck with you, Giselle, because of the shit that you did with Chris. And she don't fuck with you, Portia, because of the comments that you made about Monique. So, it's not that she's just, like, pinpointing gunning for you two. But, like, y'all, there's an understanding. And so, now, I'm not liking how, you know, Giselle's like, yeah, I'm just not really messing with how, like, she's, 
You know, nothing's ever good enough for Candace. You know, it wasn't good enough that I was like defending you. And it's not good enough, you know, with the whole Chris situation. Oh, you said something, but it was on camera. Yes, Giselle, that's a problem. Like, that's the, that's the, should we be talking about? Like, if you really had a problem and it really was such a big issue for you, you have five months to say something, but you wait till it's on camera. So if you really wrote for me the way you do, like, you wouldn't do that shit, period. Like, Giselle, and then Portia's like, oh, you know, she, she really is, like, doing bad for you because, like, for her to sit there and put on you that you were trying to accuse somebody of S.A., you know, that makes you look bad. We all know the absence of information Giselle was allowing people to assume and come to a, a inference that Chris was doing something inappropriate because when you tell somebody he made me uncomfortable, the only thing that comes to mind is a sexual advance, which is why people would assume, oh, this was an essay situation. But you get offended when Candace says you're the reason why people of essay can't come forward. And that is the truth because there's instances like this where you lying ass heifers, you know, want to try to like just put just enough out there, but then don't want to give no information. Because when you're asked at the reunion, Giselle, what did he do? What did he do? What was his actions? You all you can keep saying is, oh, I told you he made me feel uncomfortable. But how? In what way? And you can't say shit because you know what you're saying is bull. Like, I can't with hoes like Giselle. Like, Giselle, I can't. And then they get to the place, you know, um, um, and they're sitting down. The food did look good, though. The food did look good. Um, and just, hey, 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 hush. Sorry, y'all. Um, Giselle now all of a sudden wants to give her history, you know, her black history. And it's like, bitch, that's a little bit too late. See, this is what we was looking for on Potomac. But now all of a sudden, you know, you blackity black, 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 black. Okay, Giselle, get the fuck out of here. Um, so it starts raining. They go in and start to play reasonably shady. We all know that's Giselle's game. So she asks, is it shady to not feel good and still come on the trip and basically... I thought they were talking about Leah, but I guess they was talking about Marisol. And it's like, yeah, if you don't feel good, if you got a bath, then you don't move. Like, do you come and bring the mood down for everybody else? Or do you, like, just kind of, like, you know, just stay to the corner um, when y'all are out type situation? Um, is it reasonable or shady um, to, what else did she ask? Uh, is it reasonable or shady? Uh, what did she say? Um... Is it reasonable or shady? Oh, to uh, to talk about, um, to say that you paved the way, you know, uh, for other housewives. Basically, they were talking about Alexia. Alexia's like, I stand by it like, bitch, we came back after eight years. Like, that says something. Alexia's always looking for a reason to hype herself up. Like, it is what it is. Um, then, of course, is it reasonably or shady, you know, to... Uh, have the title of a book uh as something like you don't stand by and of course we're talking about heather and whitney once again she got to jump up like heather i'm gonna give you the floor to explain you know how is it like how far are you into the leaving the mormon church process and it's like whitney why is this such a big deal to you because at the end of the day the way heather is living is as a bad mormon like at the end of the day, she might not have left the church, but she's not living in, you know, their realm of what a good Mormon is. And so I know that Heather is dragging her foot when it comes to leaving the church because she's thinking about her kids, one. And two, once you leave the church, I don't think she's ready for the ramifications that comes with that. And instead of being, you know, more empathetic and sympathetic because you have gone through the process and you know what comes with it. You're trying to throw daggers at her to make her look bad. And it's like, Whitney, you want to talk about Heather being fake, but here you are doing this shit to her. Like, pick which one. Pick which one, Caesar. Okay? Um, 
then um oh is it reese worth shady to call somebody a bully when they're not a bully and Candace is like no you hoes was bullying and it's like can you call somebody a bully when like to use that word is like a trigger but sometimes somebody cannot be aware that they have bullyish behavior and the way Candace and Portia were coming for Leah it definitely was teetering like y'all was hounding her for sure y'all definitely was it was harassment like y'all was just going and going and compounding on top of Leah and then you tried to go for Candace like y'all definitely were like rawr when it came to Leah and I'm glad Candace stood up for her um everybody else was tired of Whitney and Heather talking about it like when at this point Candace is like well god dang like are we gonna stay talking about church like damn either you in or you out period <laughs> um um I'm trying to think what else um I think honestly that was it the main you know gist of it all um Whitney and Heather I'm exhausted with them I really am over it uh what do you guys think about the whole you know Whitney Heather situation who do you like side more with who do you feel is being more messy and fake uh and fugazi do you guys feel like Portia and Giselle have decided to be an alliance um do you guys feel like you know this is a good cast so far uh the ladies get back in the car um and of course, like, I don't understand Whitney and Heather. They'll, they'll fight, but they can get back in the same car. I don't get it. And basically, Heather's like telling Whitney, like, girl, we gonna table it for right now. And she's like, I wonder what they talking about. And then it flashes to Leah talking about, do y'all do anal? <laughs> now, anal, uh, everybody's like, you know, I've tried it. You know, and Candace's like, I would not advise. You know, and I did it with a small one. I can imagine doing it with a big old thing thing because y'all, don't do it. I'm like Candace. I wouldn't advise it. You know, tried it. No, it's it's not even. Mm -mm, didn't even get nowhere. Like couldn't even. Mm -mm, nope. Don't do it. Not on duty. Not on duty. I wouldn't advise it either. But you know, teachers only. Everybody can handle what they can handle. Uh -huh. Um. But uh, yeah. Um. Portia and Candace. Portia and Giselle definitely are on a mission when it comes to Candace, and we just got to see how this play out. In the future, everybody get home and then Whitney messy ass go to confessional talking about, oh, here go the three lies about Heather. Um, she's still a part of the church. Um, what did she say? She's still a part of the church. She knows who gave her a black eye and um, she lied about, um, what else did she say? She's, she, she named all the stuff that she felt like Heather was lying about. And it's like, Whitney, you really being fake as fuck right now. Like, you're really being fake as fuck. Like, you must really need this money bad uh like she is messy boots right now but y'all that was uh Real housewives ultimate girls trip y'all tell me how you feel about the episode the season so far um what are you expecting to see in the future and like how you guys feel about the girls overall um i appreciate the opportunity i'll make sure to follow my instagram and twitter and i'll catch you guys in the next one deuces